Farmers start to organize. Farmers start to come together for political action. This starts in 1867. It starts as a result of, we could say, discontent on the farm or dissatisfaction with farm life. In 1867, Oliver H. Kelly founds the National Grange of the Patrons of Husbandry, normally just shortened to the Grange, and the people who join these organizations are called Grangers. Now, these organizations are supposed to be local social, local cultural, educational groups to enliven the uh, relatively vapid, boring life of farming. It's to bring some interest to the life of the relatively isolated farmer. Although farmers can get items from mail order catalogs, it's really an isolated occupation. And these organizations, these granges, are supposed to be non-political. However, this was often ignored. And local granges came out in support of things like railroad regulation. Because farmers, unlike the John D. Rockefellers who were getting rebates from railroad companies, farmers were getting gouged by railroad companies. They were being charged exorbitantly high prices by railroad companies. And were really at the mercy of those railroad companies to get their goods to market, and they lost a lot of money as a result of railroads taking advantage of them. The Granges come out in support of state laws that would regulate the railroad companies, and they come out in support of other pro-farmer uh, legal items. The Granges are going to grow as a result of economic struggles. Depression, economic depression in the early 1870s, specifically the Panic, of 1873 leads to more and more farmers joining together to try to get something done to get government to help them more. By 1875, we have 800,000 farmers across the country that are members of one of the 20,000 local granges. One of the things farmers do to try to combat the economic struggles of the day is they set up co-ops. In other words, they set up businesses that were owned collectively by farmers in the area. And so those businesses are not trying to make a profit. They're just trying to provide goods or services for the owners. They set up co-op stores. They set up co-op grain elevators, co-op warehouses, co-op insurance companies. They even set up some co-op farm machinery factories. These are all the things that farmers needed in their daily economic lives. These are all the things that were taking advantage of them, with the exception of railroad companies. Usually, these failed. It was very difficult to keep these um, running successfully for an extended period of time. But the Grange is the first step in farmers coming together for political action. It will eventually be followed by the Farmers Alliance. This is an interest group that forms in the West and in the South, focused on issues to help farmers in the struggling economy of the post-Civil War era, of the Gilded Age. And the struggles are going to continue. In 1887, severe drought conditions in most of the West. And then in 1889 and 1894, even more drought. In fact, from 1888 to 1892, half of the people in Western Kansas, mainly affected by as a result of these drought-like conditions, are going to just pack up and leave. They're going to give up. So farmers are struggling. And this is going to lead to more collective action.